Reese here with another uh, down and dirty battered beauty review. Um, we man, we've got a fun one today. So this book, um, I just got this week. My boss at my day job walks up to me and says, "Hey Reese, uh, you like comics? I found this at my mother's house, and uh, they live out in the sticks out here in West Nebraska." This book was published at Cheyenne. It was uh, made off of a TV series. That's why it's got a photo cover by Dell Comics. This was published in 1957. Those are some stills from the television program. Uh, Westerns were king. This is issue 803. Um, I don't know if there were 800 issues of Cheyenne. Um, some Dell Comics used a, uh, a device where they would be numbered um, in the hundreds by the volume number. So issues from the first year were... Um, Plus the hundred issues from the second year were uh, one hundred plus. Um, issue from the third year were two hundred plus, or um, variations on that. Sometimes they take over numbering from previous comics, um, so that like uh, uh, you know they'd have the same. I can't think of an example right now, but, but uh, first page anyway. That's why this this sort of that first page is torn. I kind of figure out what the story goes from there. But the thing I want to point out is look at this this comic. On newsprint, yellowed newsprint, as you can see, it's got dog-eared pages, it's got water staining on it. This book, these colors, 1957 is when this was published, and look how vibrant these colors are. Just, just look at these things. So this, it's got two stories, two main stories that are in this book. Um, this first one um, features, this is, uh, uh, Cheyenne is the guy's name, he was, it's premise of the story is he was raised by Native Americans, and so when he went back to white society, um, he was given the nickname Cheyenne. Um, <clears throat> he's in Mexico. Um, the guy just does various bits of jobs in this throughout the stories, and one of them is as a courier. Um, he's re renting out his wagon to haul uh, freight and people. And um, this, and so he's in Mexico here. And the fun thing about this story. This story happens during the French invasion of Mexico um, that today is remembered by uh, El Cinco de Mayo. Um, the 5th of May um, was a, a, a particular battle where um, the invading French forces were finally expelled from Mexico, from a, a southern Mexican town. I can't remember the name of it right now. But this story um, is the Mexicans uh, and a couple Americans versus the French um, in a, a whole story of intrigue. Um, and so that's, uh, that's all part of that. So I think that's really fascinating. This first story has tons of moving parts. It's got corrupt landowners. It's got um, uh, this, this, uh, this damsel in distress kind of character who uh, um, apparently is also pickpocket and is trying to, to uh, you know, have kind of a, a bit of the femme fatale with the heart of gold trope on there. And... Um, and then there's, there's Mexican revolutionaries, and there's French soldiers, and lots of moving pieces. And I think it, this is just a, a twenty. Uh, uh, it's a, a uh, maybe even a twelve-page story. Um, I didn't count on the first ones. It's about to the staple, though. Um, so it's got tons of moving parts. Now here's the thing: this first story, the story is really good, right? The execution is not. Um, the, the dialogue um, is very heavy and also very blocky. We don't have a good chance to get to know very many of the characters. You get to know Cheyenne. Um, we get to know his buddy. But it's got a cast of almost probably a dozen characters for a dozen pages. So it doesn't give a lot of chance for us to be able to get to know any of these people very well. <clears throat> or to understand why they're doing what they're doing. Um, well, with the exception of these guys, this is a, a um, couple of, of land owner, Mexican landowners who are trying to overthrow the French occupation. And so we get to know them pretty well. And, and Cheyenne's on every page, so we get to know him pretty well, too. Um, but largely, there's a lot of not knowing um, who's who and what's what with the whole deal. Um, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a kind of a caper story, um, an Old West caper story, and it, it was fun. Um, Move along here. The second one here, uh, Cheyenne the Argonauts, right? Um, this is the second story. It's not related to the first one. There's no, no telling where the timeline happens. 
Cheyenne runs across some prospectors. And uh, in a story that could have been a Twilight Zone or could have been, you know, anything like that, um, there's just conflict about who's going to have the gold and keep the gold. And um, this one, there's four main characters and um, kind of the um, Treasure of the Sierra Madre kind of stuff is all, all happens there. Um, uh, where they're arguing, ar may, might argue about who keeps the gold and whatever. It's fun. It's a fun piece. Um, that one, the uh, dialogue is much better. The characterization is much better. The plot is far simpler um, on there. Um, I didn't see any marks about authors' names on them, so there's that. Now, the, the last thing I'm going to go ahead and show, though, um, here on the back cover, inside cover, and the back cover, there are two little bits of Old West lore, um, uh, folklore about finding water in the desert, and folklore about finding and hunting out um, bison on the trail. I don't know if any of the lore, um, the tumble bug here or anything, any of that's accurate. Um, I, uh, as far as I'm, it very much sounds like things people would have believed reading old almanacs and that kind of thing. Um, as I have from time to time, but I have no idea if it's if any of that stuff is true in it. That it, um, tumble, I have no idea if tumble bugs really do move their antenna to. To the po point, the direction where where bison or cattle herds roam, who knows? Um, but it definitely feels authentic to the kind of cowboy story that there is. Anyway, um, that was the thing I wanted to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm gonna have to splice this video together because it cut out on me in the middle of it. But hopefully, I can figure the science out. Um, I like this. It was fun. I'm I'm glad that I read it, uh, and uh, it's gonna go into my collection. Uh, I've got a a. a Silver Age poly bag here that I just happen to have thanks to um, a movie men um, uh, Jeremy Lott's movie men. They sent that along with it and I Changed their box to a modern age set a bag and I'll this one will go in there So these bent corners I won't, won't get any more bent um, So next time I read it, it's just as good. So anyway